Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I've got some really interesting things for you today. And you will remember that I'm in Scotland. And if I was to talk to you about a Scottish paranormal phenomena, you would not be surprised. Let me first of all uh, tell you about uh, one of the farmers near here where we are. He was driving home one evening and he saw in front of him a group of redcoats. They were marching down the road. Uh, he hadn't been drinking or anything, so it's nothing like that. And he was very surprised to see them. He felt that he could see through them because there was a slight mist about. So he went on and drove right up to them and then finally threw them. So that sort of phenomena is seen. Uh, where we are it is close to the Battle of Culloden. And you remember in Culloden that the English uh, um, uh, ha had a very, very bloody battle with the Scots. And uh, after when the Scots were routed they were chased by the English and they're chased all over by the English just around here and there's a loch called Loch Ashy and on the banks of Loch, Ac loch Ashy people who are interested in these sorts of phenomena have in fact uh, pitched their tents and they report and send reports in to the Psychical Society about hearing the sound of battle uh, uh, in front of them and around them during the night. Now, I tried to encourage our, my children to, to go and camp near Ashy, but none of them ever did, and of course they're far too old for it now. So, uh, Scotland and paranormal phenomena are very common. Now, what I would like to do is I'd like to talk to you today about one of the most amazing experiments that you can possibly imagine. Now let me show you the book, which is your book. It's Surviving Death, that's the one, Surviving Death by Leslie Keen. Leslie Keen, Surviving Death. Uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting book and in this she looks at uh, the factors which are involved in, uh, in the possibility of an afterlife. She's got many chapters on mediums. And in one of these chapters, I came across, I didn't actually know it before I'd written Lucy's book, we came across the idea of materializations. I knew about materializations. Do you remember that there was, uh, at the beginning of this century and the end of the last century, the beginning of uh, the century before and the end of the last century before. Um, there was a lot about materializations in seances and at the time uh, of I think 1850, 1860, something like that, there was the idea of dancing tables, tables which levitated in the in the seance uh, room uh, when people just had their hands lightly on it. And there were a lot of controls done. And from this came the spiritist movement by a guy called Kardec. And Kardec is one of the founders of the spiritist movement, which is very widely uh, regarded in Brazil. And there are many spiritist members. They're a lovely group of people. I went around a hospital in uh, Sao Paulo uh, run by the Spiritists. It's a children's hospital and it was absolutely magnificent. They were all volunteers, the hospital was wonderfully clean and there is a um, an illness called Leshnions and this is a genetic illness. It's pretty rare fortunately and it's one in which people try to eat themselves and if you have a child with Leshnions, particularly as it grows up and gets stronger, uh, you have to in some way restrain it from uh, eating itself. 
and uh, I saw two Leshnard's children in the hospital looked after by the spiritists and they did that absolutely beautifully. So that's the spiritist movement coming from Kardec in France, but he of course uh, died, I think, I may be wrong, but I think somewhere in 1926. At any rate, any of you who are interested in Kardec, and particularly if you're living in France, can go to Paris where you can see his grave. Now, one of the things that uh, Leslie Keane has written about in her book is materializations. Materializations are where the medium make things happen. And I'm going to talk about one experiment which uh, I, I like very much just simply because of the uh, subtlety of it. Remember, there are two views of materialization, skeptics or hui, and those people who have actually looked at the data and see what it's about, saying, no, there's something really interesting here. Well, I think I fall into the latter group because I've read the data, and some of it is amazing, as you, I think you will agree with this experiment. So here we are then. Uh, this was done by uh, Klaski, who was the medium. He's a Polish, uh, 1921. He's a Polish uh, medium. And uh, there was endless, endless preparation of the sounds room to make sure that nobody could got in, nobody was hiding, nothing could be done, uh, which would uh, be fraud because fraud is always what people say. Oh, that happened, no, it's fraud. Uh, what evidence have you looked at? Oh, I don't need to look at the evidence. I know all mediums are frauds. You know, that sort of attitude, which is ridiculous. Any rate, uh, in this particular materialization, the uh, medium, who's Klosky, was able to produce uh, materializations, or ectoplasm, it was then called, and what was much more interesting is that the ectoplasm, which f often flowed about the room, um, was uh, then uh, it would run around. People could touch it sometimes, sometimes it would go over them. But one form the ectoplasm took was that of spirit hands. Spirit hands. It also would form itself into spirit faces or faces of people. Goodness knows what spirit faces means, but they looked like ordinary people. And in this experiment, and tell me if you don't agree with me, I think it is a genius of an experiment. Because uh, what they said was, look, now look, everybody says that when we feel the touches of these spirit hands, it's imagination, it's nothing, nothing to do with ectoplasm, rubbish, go home. Well, what they thought they would do is they produced a tank of warm water and they put in, floated on the top of it, a layer of molten wax. Now you can begin to see the cleverness of this experiment. And in some of the experiments, Without anybody knowing, uh, one of the experimenters added some blue colouring to the wax, so nobody knew about that. And then when the spirit hand came, they asked Klatsky through his spirit guide to get the spirit to, or whatever it was, the materialization, to put its hand, its spirit hand, into the wax. Now, if it's anything real, then the wax will cling to it, won't it? And so they did that, and they cooled the wax on the spirit's hand, and they did it two or three times. And on one occasion, as I said, they put dye in, so people would know it was um, nothing to do with... Uh, it, it wasn't imported at, at all, because the wax was exactly what you would expect with the blue dye in it. And then the wax uh, consolidated and when the medium withdrew the materialization, which they always do, and the ectoplasm went back into the medium, you were left with what? A wax hand. 
Don't you think that's clever? I did. I thought that was really clever. So that tells us a lot of things. First of all, it's very physical. Secondly, uh, it can get itself covered in wax. Thirdly, that uh, the spirit was able to put this hand in the wax. The spirit or, or, or what the medium had conjured up was able to put its hand in the wax. I mean, fascinating. And then there was the wax there left afterwards. And you know if you have a wax mold, which you do, which is just a standard process, they put in uh, plaster and they produced a cast of, of the spirit's hand. And I have some photographs from your book. And uh, these are the photographs. And in fact, the hands uh, look exactly like real hands. See if you like this. Mm, uh, can I show it to you? Um, what I could have done was put these into a PowerPoint, but yeah, there you are. Amazing hands, absolutely amazing hands, which came out of the wax. I think you'll probably go out of focus if I go much closer. So you can you can look at it for yourself and you can learn all about it if you buy Leslie Keane's book or borrow a copy of Leslie Keane's book from the library. So uh, what have we learned? We've learned that in that case, um, as the idea of a materialization seems to be um, uh, realistic and seems to be very physical. And uh, if you look at uh, all the controls they did, it, it has to be real. You can't say, oh, there's a lab person who put his hand into wax and that's his cast. I mean, this is the usual answer, isn't it? No. You must read the actual experiments and what they did, and you'll find that it sounds very real. So that's nice and interesting. Uh, poltergeists. Well, there is a post poltergeist called the Enfield poltergeist, which I was involved with, involved in the sense that um, I had one member of, of the family who came I into my unit, and she was perfectly normal. Usually it's assumed that it's a, um, a, a, an adolescent girl who does this, but what I found in that family it was all perfectly normal. You couldn't say that there were people with very strong uh, psychopathology. And uh, if you look it up, it's Enfield Poltergeist, you'll see that there's a lot of discussion about it, and some of it... Um, says that she was a fraud, well she may have done fraudulent things as well, but there's certainly poltergeist things. And uh, a colleague of mine uh, went to Enfield and the poltergeist was throwing things about the room and he'd pick them up and throw them back into a corner and the poltergeist would throw them back at him. Well that's what he said and he's a perfectly honest and honourable man, so I assume that that's what happened. So there you are. Something new for today. Should you start believing in spirits? That's up to you, really. Uh, look at the data, and Leslie Keane's book is a really very good book on this, and see what you think. And uh, Leslie Keane's book also uh, goes towards the uh, a much wider examination of factors which point to the afterlife. So, um, I'd be interested to hear from you guys if you believe in the afterlife after reading Leslie Keane's book. And what some of you may not know is that uh, the billionaire Bigelow has in fact offered money for um, a really good description and mechanism for the afterlife well, do we all want an afterlife? Uh, not if it's the same as this, but if it's the love and bliss and light that those in the near-death experience describe and we sometimes can see inside ourselves, then that would be a different matter. Okay, so thanks very much and I hope to see you in a week or two weeks' time. Okay, bye.